are on time, so we can start. So today I'm glad to introduce um, Constanza Maudesin for this seminar, for seminar online this Friday. So Constanza was born in Cordoba, Argentina, and she studied as a professor of biological sciences and, uh, and biologist at the National University of Cordoba. In, the same, in this same institution, she completed the doctorate in biological sciences, working in the evolutionary ecology and floral biology laboratory. Her thesis entitled The Role of Pollinators and the Phylogenetic History on the Divergence, Integration, and Modularity of the Floral Phenotype of Nirenbergia Solanaceae under the supervision of Dr. Alicia Salsic. She is currently a postdoctoral researcher in genetics for ecological restoration and collaborating with other research in biology and education in biology. And today she's going to talk to us about uh, her research in pollination by oil collecting bees and its implication in floral evolution in the genius near Bershia. So thank you again, Tony, for being for presenting today. And now you can start uh, sharing your screen. Okay. Hi everyone. Thank you. Thank you, Rocio, for the introduction and for the opportunity to talk today. I unfortunately I will have to turn off the camera because we try the connection with Rocio and the internet is not so good, so 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 that we can we cannot we, we don't lose the, the sound. Can you see the screen? Yes. Perfect. Well, I studied uh, genus Nierenbergia as a doctoral student, exploring how the interaction with pollinators influence the floral evolution in this uh, genus in, in a phylogenetic framework. So I, I am going to show you today some results that were obtained in collaboration with Alicia Cersic, Maria Noel Augusto, Juan Fornoni, Andrea Cocucci, Nahuel Palombo, Liliana Aguirre, Nicolás Rocamundi, and more people. Genus uh, Nierenbergia is uh, a little small, small of Solanaceae. It has 21 neotropical species inhabiting mainly in Argentina, but with representatives also in Bolivia, Brazil, Chile, Paraguay, Uruguay, and Mexico. In Argentina, we have 15 species present in subtropical areas from sea level to more than 30,000 meters altitude. Some of them grow in very disturbed areas, such as roadsides or in marshy places like lake margins, but also in very dry areas and in the high mountains. I am really grateful for having visited a lot of amazing places in search for the plants like, like this one. This genus has beautiful flowers. Uh, the flowers in Nierenbergia are characterized by a silver form corolla with a long tube that doesn't contain nectar. The fertile parts of the flower, the stamens and style, emerge from the center of the corolla limb, mostly forming a central column that vary in length and shapes among species. At first glance, the flowers uh, are similar in their general morphology, but they present great variation in characteristics important to pollination, such as the size of the floral limb and the arrangement of fertile parts, which could indicate that natural selection mediated by pollinators may act on floral phenotype. The flowers also vary in corolla color from white to light violet and rarely um, dark violet too. Nierenbergia is the only genus of the Solanaceae family that presents the particularity of offering non-volatile oil as floral reward to pollinators. The fatty oil is produced 
in an oil gland or LIOFOR that consists in a cover of uh, brief trichomes located in the upper surface of the corolla limb near the base of the stamen filaments. I hope you can see the Oil as reward offered to pollinators evolved in flowers of around 2,000 plant species of only 11 families within the angiosperms. This particular floral characteristic it was, is what defines the floral syndrome of oil flowers. This floral reward favored the specialization of these species to a particular group of pollinators called the oil collecting bees. Oil collecting bees are only a few genera of solitary bees of, of the families Apidae and Melitidae that have spe special structures, mainly on their legs, to collect, handle, and transport the floral oil, which is harvested directly from the LIOFORS that may be located in different parts of the flower. Consequently, oil collecting bees can be considered at a fine, at a fine a grain scale as a special optional group of pollinators within a coarse scale group of bee pollinators. In pollination ecology, a functional group is defined as a group of pollinators that may belong to different genera or families but behave in a similar, similar manner and insert similar selective pressures on floral phenotype. However, the collecting bees encompass a great diversity, only at taxonomic level, but also in morphological and behavioral aspects. Since this functional group of oil collecting bees is within itself functionally diverse, we wonder whether these bees, despite their gross commonalities, may be exerting divergence within and among oil flower species, or alternatively, promoting conversions to a sort of jack of all trades, oil flower, which does well in being pollinated by a functional um, diverse range of oil bees. For Nierenbergia, the first record of the pollination biology was the contribution of Simpson and Neff in 1981. And 10 years after, Andrea Cocucci described the pollinator assemblages of some of its species. He reported that the pollinators of Nierenbergia were being of the genus of the genera Calepogenus, Tapinotaspi and centuries, which vary in size, foraging behavior, and mode of performing pollination. This first record suggests that there is a considerable diversity among the oil collecting bees that pollinate Nirenbergia flowers, and that this group of pollinators may not conform a single functional group but rather a variety of, of functionally diverse bees. So in this talk, I, I will try to answer these questions. Which and how many oil collecting bees pollinate, uh, bee species pollinate in a birth species? Do pollinators differ in morphological and behavioral features? Are Nierenbergia flowers pollinated by just one or more than one functional group of pollinators? And in second place, does the interaction with oil collecting bees affect the evolution of floral phenotype in this genus? In order to answer these questions, it is essential to explore the phenotypic variation in floral traits involved in pollination, pollination interaction, and also to gain knowledge on certain natural history aspects of the bees regarding their uh, behavior.
differences in the places uh, of their bodies onto which pollen is carried, and in B, body size phenotype, among other aspects. Can, can you listen in? Yes, it's having to broken some time, okay. but it's okay. I, I, I saw a message from and so we perform field observations and samplings of 18 near emergia taxa, including 14 species and the intraspecific taxa of two of them that present varieties. And we recorded pollinator assemblages, as well as the foraging behavior, visitation frequency, and morphometric of each pollinator species in order to explore the relationship between these attributes and the evolution of floral phenotype in Nierenberg. With this sampling, all the branches of the phylogeny were represented. All the sample taxa are shown in bold. All of them live in Argentina, except from um, Nierenbergia repens, that was sampled in Chile, and Nierenbergia angustifolia in Mexico. Okay, I will show you now what we found about pollinators. We have oil collecting bees in all the sampled Nierenbergia species except for Nierenbergia regularis and Nierenbergia angustifolia, because these species, um, in these species, the flowers do not have oil, so they are visited by other insects, uh, such as hoverflies or, or bee flies. Pollinators, oil flowers of Nierenbergia correspond to 14 species of six genera, uh, of Api, the bee family, Centris, Arisocebele, Tapinotaspis, Tetrapedia, Xenonomada, and Calepobis. Pollinator assemblages of the species and varieties of Nierenbergia largely differed and contrary to expectations and were composed by up to four species of oil collecting bees. You can see in this graph that most Nierenbergia taxa are pollinated by only one or two pollinator species. And the proportion of visits of each pollinator species varied considerably among Nierenbergia taxa, even in those species with similar pollinator assemblages. Three species of Calepovinus were uh, along with Tapinotaspis calivia that pollinated four species of Nierenbergia. Except for Nierenbergia repens, that um, it's pollinated by the uh, centri species only, all Nierenbergia species and varieties were pollinated by at least one species of Calepogonus. Our observations revealed that the bees differed in foraging behavior during rewards collection and pollination. All the oil collecting bee species indeed collected oil from the flowers, but we observed that some of them also collected pollen from Nierenbergia flowers. Thus, we found that these pollinator species exhibit two different foraging behaviors, soil oil collection and oil and pollen collection. The bees of uh, this genera, Centris, Arisocebele, Tetrapedia, Tapinotaspis, and Xenonomada, were observed collecting only oil in the flowers of Nierenbergia, while oil Calep while all Calepogon species were observed collecting both oil and pollen in the flowers. 
we call the first group as solely oil collecting bees, and all the species of Calepogonus were called as oil and pollen collecting bees. These two flora uh, resource harvesting behavior differed in the the birds were handled and pollinated by the bees, even when being carried out by the same bee species. I would like to, to show you two videos of these foraging behaviors. I, I fell in love with, with the bees the first time I saw them collecting oil. The, the first video is about uh, solely oil collecting bees. The, you will see that uh, the bee, the, the about chillens, uh, the bee uh, on the corolla and collect oil um, using their front legs. Can you see it? Yes, we can see it. She's really fast. But in a slower speed. The, the species of the other uh, genera of solely oil collecting bees have exactly the same behavior you have seen, or they land upon the fertile column and collect the oil using their front leg or middle legs like uh, these bees in these pictures. In general, once individuals of this species landed on the flower, they remained in position or only their legs to harvest the oil. Thus, pollen is precisely deposited on the insect's body. And pollination is either nototribic or sternotribic. In the first case, the nototribic pollination, the pollen is added to the dorsal part of the thorax or to the front part of the insect's head, like in the video. The second in the second case, pollen is deposited and removed from the bent part of the insect body and is in the species. The second video is uh, about oil and pollen collecting bees. This, this behavior was only observed in Calepogonus species. And you will see that flower manipulation when collecting oil is completely different uh, from the behavior when collecting pollen. Oil collection in Calepogon species is very similar to the, to the one you have seen in the, in the first video, but with the difference that these bees always land in the corolla limb and revolve around the central fertile column to collect the oil with their front legs. Here is pollen collection. They, they climb onto the top of the, the central fertile column and grasp the column just below the anther with their, their jaws. And they collect pollen with their front legs, which is moved onto the scopas in the hind legs. As you have seen, while collecting oil, pollen is deposited on the insect's head, like in this picture. This is not a trivial pollination. 
but while collecting pollen, the particular position above the fertile parts causes the position of pollen from the anthers onto different parts of the, the ventral part of the body, even uh, on the abdomen and the legs. And this uh, causes occasional deposition of pollen on the stigma. That, though mentioned by pollen species, is not trivial during oil collection. During pollen collection, these bees occasionally carried out sternotribic pollination. So bees differed in the foraging behavior, the, the observed species in, in, in Erenberger flowers, differ in the foraging behavior and the mode they perform pollination. They, you can see in the pictures that, that they also differ in size we captured and measured individuals of all species and found that centric species were the largest bees next to Xenonomada bees and several Calepogon species were the smallest bees. In conclusion, we found two main bee, bee groups, bee species groups considering rewards collection, mode of performing pollination, and multivariate body size. The group of the left side of the graph can be clearly distinguished for the other group formed by all Calipogon species. Within the first group, three minor groups were found. One composed by centric species, another group uh, by Tetrapedia and Arisocele, Picta, and a third group composed by Xenonomada and Tapinotaspis. On the other hand, among Calepogonus species, it can be seen that almost all species overlap in the multivariate space, forming a single group, except for this species, Calepogonus parvus, which settled an independent group. Thus, Five different functional groups of oil collecting bees involving the pollination of Nierenbergia flowers were proposed. Three functional groups corresponding to a major group of solely oil collecting bees, which differs in size and mode of performing pollination, and the remaining two groups correspond to oil and pollen collecting bees that perform the same mode of pollination, but differ in size. So now we know that Nierenbergia flowers are pollinated by many species of oil collecting bees that differ in morphological and behavioral features and presumably compose different functional groups. So now, how does this interaction with oil collecting bees affect the evolution of floral phenotype in, in Nierenbergia? We explore phenotypic variation in floral traits by morphometric measurements of the flowers. We found that Nierenbergia taxa mainly differ in size in axis and in the length of the fertile parts in axis two. This multivariate pattern of variation was not correlated with uh, phylogenetic relationships, as we can see in this phylomorpho space be built with the uh, axis one of, and two of this principal component analysis. We also tried a um, phylogenetical signal of particular traits and, and found that there are um, there, there is no phylogenetic signal in, in particular traits. And finally, through a correlation test between morphological and ecological distant matrices in, in among species, 
we saw that Nirenbergia species that are morphologically similar do not have similar pollinator assemblages. This means that floral uh, conversion, convergence at the multivariate phenotypic level is not related to pollinators assemblage composition. As we have seen, in the flowers of Nirenbergia, fertile parts emerge from the center of the corolla limb and the oil secreting trichomes are scattered on the upper surface of the limbs. In the success in flowers is must fit in height the distance between the limb and the stigma and the anthers, as well as, as well as get radially placed to contact the column. Thus, B body size play a crucial role in the pollination mechanism. To assess the hypothesis of mechanical fit between corolla diameter and B body length and between um, fertile parts length and B body height. We perform phylogenetic regressions using phylogenetic generalized list PGLS. And uh, uh, the relationship between floral and B traits, considering the maximum average and minimum value of morphometric variables of length and height of the pollinators that constitute each pollinator uh, assemblage. Contrary to expectations, we found that there is no association between corolla diameter and pollinator length, nor between stamens or style length and pollinator body height. We also tried selective regime models to assess whether the dominance of small or large bees in the pollinators assemblage generated different phenotypic optima in the evolution of these floral traits, but we didn't find evidence for that hypothesis either. Maria Noela Augusto, the girl here in the picture, carried out her graduation thesis in our lab, characterizing in detail the LIOFORS of Nierenbergia taxa by tying several traits, as uh, once uh, here, and evaluate the relation of these characters with pollinator traits, such as uh, B body uh, and leg, uh, four leg length in a phylogenetic framework. Using PGLS and phylogenetic ANOVA, she found that Nirenbergia flowers that are frequently pollinated by long bees had larger, more extensive, less dense, and present trichomes and those taxa that are um, pollinated by shorter leg lengths, the uh, bees. Here I, I show some of her results about the lyophore area. You can see the relationship here and trichomes density. So to finish, I will briefly refer to another series of analysis that we carried out considering other levels of organization of the floral phenotype. Many studies have shown that pollinators through selective pressures can act not only on the variation of floral traits, that, that is what I have been trying to, to test in the, in the previous slides, but they also act on the interrelationships between traits. That is the correlations on the variances. The concept of phenotypic integration 
refers to the interrelationship between morphological traits. The presence of groups of traits uh, that vary together and are relatively independent of other groups of floral traits play an important role in the evolution of the floral phenotype because integration can increase functionality while acting as a constraint to evolutionary change, or it can enhance evolutionary potential by maintaining association between some traits and allowing the independent evolution of other groups of traits. So using the morphometric measurements of the flowers, we calculated the levels of phenotypic integration of the flower as a whole, as a whole unit, and of two modules uh, composed by traits of corolla and fertile parts, respectively. We found that Nierenbergia taxa, that, I, uh, that are pollinated by solely all collecting bees in, in blue color, have higher levels of integration in the flower considered as a whole in the corolla module and in the fertile parts module than those taxa that are, pol that are pollinated by oil and pollen collecting bees here in orange. In addition, using evolutionary models that test selective regimes, we found that there are two phenotypic optima for floral integration and corolla integration. These results, a very exciting, exciting result, indicates that Nirenbergia taxa uh, specialized in solely oil collecting bees pollination are evolving towards higher levels of phenotypic integration. So to resume, we didn't find a relationship between the multivariate floral phenotype and the composition of the uh, pollinator assemblages. And we didn't find effective mechanical fit between floral lane or fertile parts and uh, general body size of pollinators. But we did find evidence about an association between several reward attributes and pollinator traits, such as the length of foraging bee legs. We also found that the pollination by different uh, functional groups of bees may have important consequences for the evolution of floral phenotype in Nirenbergia through variation in the levels of phenotypic integration. To conclude, one of the strengths of this study of the floral evolution in Nirenbergia was the use of several approaches and the exploration of different levels of floral phenotype from the analysis of variation in particular traits to emergent attributes such as the interrelationship between traits. And undoubtedly, field observations contributed to obtain detailed information about rewards for aging behavior of pollinators, we consider attributes that turned out to be, together with morphological traits, a key factor that promotes floral phenotypic divergence in Nierenbergia genes. So that's all. Thank you very much for listening. I, I hope you, you hear and, and saw everything without problem. Thank you, Connie. That was a great presentation. Thank you very much for, for this talk. Really, really interesting model of study and all about bees. I, I didn't know anything about bees, so it's kind of... <laughs> <laughs> most, of most of the talk was about me. <laughs> yeah, so we have a first question of Pat Bedinger. 
Uh, she says, if, do you know about plant mating system? If it's auto-compatible or auto-incompatible, it looks like the oil plus pollen collectors will be very good at self-pollinating flower. Yeah, exactly. I, I to, to get uh, data about mating system in the Nierenbeja genus. I started at the beginning of my thesis uh, making uh, reproductive essays. With, with pollen, but I I couldn't I, I couldn't succeed with, with that uh, part of the thesis. So I I don't have uh, the information about the system of the species. I know that at least one of them is uh, self compatible. But yes, that's that's um, um, this difference in foraging behavior, we, we think that uh, maybe exerting different uh, selective pressures on the on the floral time, uh, and one of the reasons of that is, uh, is that this uh, oil and pollen uh, collecting behavior may be uh, depositing cell pollen uh, in the flower, yes, with, with certainty. But I, I don't have the, the information for all the, the species. But did you want to say something? Oh, thank you. I just, I just, it was quite striking your video that showed lots of deposition of pollen before visiting the um, sexual organs. So I just yeah. wondered if if there could be, and then also, did was it? Did you have a, a smaller flower size with that group as well? We we didn't find a, a strong relationship between um, flower size and, and bee bee size because these uh, small bees, calipogonus, that collect oil and pollen, are present oh. in almost all species. Uh, of Nirenbergia, but uh, it, it, it may be important that for the other uh, bigger species, the uh, larger species, uh, the, the flowers must be, I don't know, I, I think it, it, it has to be like a trade-off between being small for, for being pollinated by the small bees. And, and, in, in fact, there are some some species that have um, two levels or three of stamens uh, height. Oh, I, I I think that that's probably correlated with being pollinated or having been pollinated in the past by by small and larger bees at the same time. Oh, thank you. That's so interesting. Thank you. Thanks, Pat. Uh, I think uh, Stacy raised the hand for a, a short moment. I know Stacy is here, there. I'm a goof. I got too excited, but I typed my question in the chat, so I'm going to wait my turn. Okay. <laughs> so we have a, um, we, there is a lot of comments saying very interesting talks, great work, of course. Then there is a question of Greg Anderson. He says, uh, did you find any bees that came for shaft pollen? Like in Solenum? Yes, I have. They, they were very rare. And in, in terms of, in comparison with the visitation frequency of oil collecting bees. The Apis man um, is from a liquid. To, uh, the I, I don't know how I, how are they called sweat bees or something like that the ones that look like uh, metal shiny uh, we but but in very few populations and in, and in a lower visitation frequency but we we saw other bees too. Thanks. Funny. I don't know if Greg, if you want to comment something about that, or no, that's that's really good, very interesting. The the 
the pollen looks so abundant and so easy to get that it's surprising that pollen collecting bees don't go there. But then why wouldn't you get the oil too? If you could, except they don't know how, I guess. So a lot of pollen. Yeah, lots of pollen. But I, I never saw like bombus or that type no. of larger bee. No. Never. Thanks, Greg. Then there is a question, the same fascinating first, a question by Richard Olmstead. I don't know if Richard, do you want to um, ask a question? Sure. Um, well, that was a fascinating talk, Constanza. Thank you so much. I really didn't know much about uh, Nirenbergia. I actually grew one in my garden for a while, but I never looked closely at the flowers. Uh -huh. um, but uh, I was wondering if, um, if you had said early that there were some species that did not have oil uh, producing structures and were pollinated by something else. Yeah, what, that's right. What? Yeah, there are, I, I think, three, four, or, or five at the most species that do not produce oil. I found uh, one of the samples, I, the samplings I, I did was to Nirenbergia regularis that uh, we thought that uh, it produces oil because uh, the flowers have trichomes, but apparently they, they don't, they, they stop producing oils and the other species uh, have lost, the have lost the trichomes. So where do they fit on the phylogenetic tree? Has the, have they lost them? Is there one loss of oil glands or multiple losses? Yeah, the, the, there are multiple losses because they are spread in the phylogeny. That's yeah, independent lo losses. Thank you. Thanks, Richard and Connie. Then there is a turn of Stacy. Okay, yeah, I have so many questions just because I've spent so much time looking for Nuremburgias <laughs> and, <laughs> yeah, and actually like not, uh, yeah, I, I haven't seen many pollinators and maybe Luke has seen some, I mean, um, so anyway, I, so I, this is so much of this is just things I'd love to have seen and I didn't. Um, so I was wondering about sort of the geographic context and two questions I put in the chat, but um, one is I've always seen Nuremburgias growing by themselves. It seems like they're generally allopatric, which is, is very interesting because, you know, other Solanaceae just like Iachromas just all grow on top of each other like crazy. Um, and so it's very interesting that it seems like it's allopatric. I don't know if that's what you've seen. And then, but then I was still wondering if there are any sort of geographic patterns to the pollination. So like do things in the north tend to be pollinated by a particular group of bees or things in dry places tend to be pollinated by a group of bees or something like that? Yeah, thank, thank you for that question. I, I am starting to explore more deeply the geographical context because uh, we have seen, well, we, I, I just sampled one site per species. Only in one species, I, I sampled uh, several sites, but it was an exception. And I, I also had problems with, with finding uh, the, the species. Uh, in some cases, I, I couldn't do it. They, they are small populations and very uh, located, I don't know. But uh, yeah, I... I never visited a site uh, with two species growing there simultaneously. I, I only, I only uh, found sites with uh, one species. Uh, there, there are, there is a, a geographical um, story about uh, uh, Christina Costa from our lab. She did the phylogeny of Nierenbergia and found that there is a, a highland clay and a lowland clay. That, that's a, a very interesting biogeographic history uh, related to sea level and introgression, marine introgressions in the continent. And uh, related to pollination, we've seen that 
the high, um, there are some species that are restricted to the northwest uh, area of Argentina that are uh, living in a high mountain and they are uh, being pollinated by more or less the same species. But uh, in, the, in the other species, there is no uh, such a, a clear geographic uh, pattern, but we, we are thinking in, in doing something about uh, niche partitioning and exploring more the distributional patterns of the bees too, that there is not much information about that, but it would be very nice to, to, to explore in a more deep the way the geographical uh, thing. <laughs> that's okay. That's so interesting. Thank you very much. I can't wait to Thank see you. what else you find in the group. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Stacy. Then there is a comment of uh, Janet Sullivan saying another example of how important field observations are in understanding a species. Nice presentation and thanks for including the videos. Great job. Then also Greg Anderson says about uh, the question, uh, previous question, while the multiple losses of oil producing hairs will seem to be strong evidence of a cost reward system that must be very effective to maintain. It seems to be. I don't know because there are more species with oil than without oil. There are many more with oil, uh, but I, 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 I don't know much about uh, how how costly would be to to produce oil. There, there is a nice um, paper of I think Renner and Schaeffer from uh, oil loss in oil flowers across the angiosperms. But I, I haven't studied that in, in a deep uh, approach in, in, in my study. Thanks. Then we have Richard. You want to say something? Uh, well, I just have a follow up on Greg's comment that if the non oil producing bees had um, colonized habitats or uh, areas that didn't have any oil producing bees, then that could be a strong selection for mm. finding pollinators yeah. that were not yes, that's, uh, oil collecting. That's an interesting point. One of the species that lacks oil is in Mexico. I, I found it and I, I didn't uh, see any, any oil collecting bee species nor collecting uh, pollen. And um, I tried to, to find another one that is in Bolivia, but I, I couldn't find it. So I, I don't know if there are oil collecting bees uh, near. And I know the, I, the, the one I, I sampled is in, a, in, a, in the east of Argentina, where there are a lot of uh, species, uh, oil collecting species. So I, I think, uh, but but that one is the one that have the trichomes that which uh -huh. do not produce oil. But but that's an interesting hypothesis. I have another question, if I may, before you answer somebody else is. But um, you said some of the bees do both oil and pollen collecting. Will they do both types of collecting on the same floral visit, or do they focus on oil collecting? for a while and then maybe at another time focus on pollen collecting. They do the both things in the same at the same time. They uh, in general they first collect the oils and they climb onto the column and collect the pollen. Thank you. Thanks. Uh, Greg, I don't know if you want to comment something. Oh, I was just going to say if Jack Neff is still active, I bet he might be able to answer the question that uh, Dick raised about the co-distribution of oil collecting bees 
uh, uh, Nirenbergia, because I think yeah. he was a real nerdy in investor in oil collecting bee biology. Mm -hmm. yeah. I am, I'm very excited about uh, doing that uh, study about the geographical yeah. context. Thank you. Thanks. So I don't know if there is any other question. In that case, we are finishing this seminar for today. Uh, thank you everyone and thank you Connie again for the great talk and the great work that you have done. Um, we are, we are uh, doing another SOL seminar online in two weeks. And in that case, it's going to be Gabriela Massa that's going to present about advances and perspectives of potato breeding and by gen gene editing. So with that, thank you everyone and see you in two weeks. Thank you all for listening and for your interesting question. Thank you, Rosie. Bye.